You'd better tell the captain. We've got to land as soon as we can. This woman has to be gotten to a hospital. A hospital? What is it? It's a big building with patients, but that's not important right now. More than any other genre, comedy brings people together, as the jokes have the magical ability to jump off the screen and into our everyday lives. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. However, there was one modest comedy that made more than just a modest splash on pop culture, and it introduced the world to a whole new style of comedy. I'm my name is Borat. I like you. I like sex. It's nice. With its off-the-wall sense of humor and countless quotable lines, the movie was immediately successful, even getting nominated for Best Screenplay at the Academy Awards. However, that is where things get interesting, as the movie's screenplay was essentially non-existent, instead relying completely on improvisation. We'll call it 85. No, we can call it 117. This may not sound that impressive, as a lot of movies will stack a cast full of comedians and just have them riff until they find something they can use. That escalated quickly. However, Borat was different. His dedication to his characters is part of what makes the pranks found in his Borat movies, Bruno, and his TV show, Who is America, so memorable. This should be arming the children. With the exception of a few people who were in on the joke, every other person in these movies were not. I'm done. We're finished. We have to leave. Sasha Baron Cohen wanted to extend the type of prank interviews that he did on the Ali G show into a full-length film. However, it isn't enough to scrap together a bunch of loose footage, they needed to develop a plot and character. We realise that no matter how hilarious the material is, people will get tired, and you need some stakes and some kind of, why is he doing it? Then people don't mind, as long as there's a reason for him to be doing these things. So, the two of them began developing an idea, some sort of loose reasoning for Borat to come to the States. However, they quickly learned that it was best not to plan the story too far out. I remember shooting the first Borat movie, and after the first scene, it was like this moment of realization where these are real people who are moving the story forward. They don't know they're in a movie. They don't know that the things they say are going to change these fake characters' lives, but they are real people who are changing the story. Sasha Baron Cohen liked this so much, in fact, that he uprooted his life and spent an entire year and a half on the road with only that rough idea and a limited budget. They set out to make a movie that could sum up all the different facets of America. Greatest country in the world! For most people, awkward conversations and confrontations are enough to make their skin crawl. But for Cohen and Co, they were something to be sought out. What do you do? I have spent years in construction. Um, I've recently retired. You are retired. The point of their work is satire, putting a magnifying glass to the darkest parts of the world around them. The only issue with that is that people normally hide those parts, but by playing an exaggerated and cartoonish person, they are able to coax out the prejudiced things people wouldn't normally admit. Are women your slaves in Russia? No. Do you have a slaves here? We no wish. slaves. No we slaves. Wish. Sometimes this would end up making that person look good. Look, there is a woman in a car. Can we follow her and no, maybe no. make a sexy no, time no, with no, her? No, 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 Let's no, get no, her. no, 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 no. Why not? Because a woman has a right to choose who she has sex with. What? How about that? Or they would let themselves look very bad. Shave that dead gum mustache off so you're not so conspicuous. So you look like maybe an Italian or something yes. as far as from people looking at you. I see a lot of people and I think there's a dead gum Muslim I wonder what kind of bomb he's got strapped to him. Yes. This strategy continued with the film Bruno. Albeit, he definitely took a more assertive approach this time around. The character of Bruno, a very out and proud gay supermodel, was chosen specifically to upset homophobes. This led to the masterstroke of the whole movie, in which Sasha convinces a group of Arkansas residents to attend an MMA match in the name of Straight Pride. Straight Pride! Straight Pride! The fight starts normally, with the people in the audience loving it, but then there is a sudden change in the night's entertainment. The two actors continue into a very tender display that we unfortunately cannot show here. So instead, we will just let the audience fill you in on what happened. This big climax worked wonderfully for the movie, but almost caused a complete stop in the making of it. The crowd turned violent and started throwing chairs, glass bottles, and anything that wasn't nailed down at the character actor. This wasn't the first time this has happened, as something similar nearly broke out during the national anthem sequence in Borat. There are many instances where violence has broken out, even somewhere his life was in real danger. 
However, he keeps going with the bit, not just out of preservation of the project, but for self-preservation. I go deep into character at that point. If it feels like it's going to get violent, then I, you can't, the, the worst thing you can do is crack and then realize that you're playing a character. So you don't go, hey, oh, I'm yeah, just yeah, want yeah. to mock you and right. expose your racism. Right. Then you're really in trouble. This dedication didn't just give him issues with the public, it also caused several run-ins with the police. After the boxing scene in Bruno, police brought in the entire production crew for inciting a riot. However, by this time, everyone knew the drill and how to handle the situation. This wasn't the case with the first film as they often found themselves in legal trouble. Over the course of the year and a half it took to shoot Borat, the police were called on them 92 times. Some of the crew had to spend a night or two in prison at different points. However, that pales in comparison to the trouble they almost found themselves in. As the FBI themselves began tailing the production team not long after, Numerous people have been calling into the agency concerned about a vaguely Middle Eastern man with a bear traveling across the country in an ice cream truck. There were a couple of times where agents would show up at the hotel where everyone was staying. Every time they did, Sasha would be instructed to hide or leave the premises before questioning. He was not a US citizen, and so any trouble he got into would lead to an immediate termination of his work visa and would cause him to get sent back to London. To prevent this from happening, they had a lawyer on retainer for the entire time they were shooting. There did prove to be a long period until the next project, however. Sasha Baron Cohen ran into an issue after the release of Bruno that put an indefinite pause on making another movie in this format. He had become too much of a great success. The first Borat film came out in 2006, and Bruno followed not long after in 2009. Sasha had ideas to follow up on these, but no matter what character he dressed as, he would be immediately spotted. That is the issue of interacting with the public. You can't control what movies they have seen. With no feasible solution, he had to hang up the mustache and focus on fiction work. It wasn't until he created the show Who is America in 2017 that he was able to return to the genre. Using heavy facial prosthetics, he created a variety of characters to interview people on both sides of the political spectrum. So I would like you to help me do instructional video for three-year-olds. Okay, like this. Just remember to point Puppy Pistol's mouth right at the middle of the bad man. This convinced Sasha Baron Cohen that enough time had passed where he could make it work. And with that, I go to America! In order for the film to be done, it had to be made in complete and utter secrecy. From late 2019 to mid 2020, Sasha Baron Cohen is going and filming scenes for this subsequent sequel film. This was all done without anyone being the wiser. They achieved this by having Borat require a disguise for large parts of the movie, as well as partially shifting the focus to his daughter, Tutar. <laughs> By having the father-daughter relationship being integral to the story, the movie develops a whole new layer of sincerity. While this is due in large part to Maria Bakalova's fantastic performance, most of it comes from the people she had the good fortune of coming across. Superwoman to drive! No, 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 no! You are a man! No! Dressed like a woman! No. Janice Jones was a professional babysitter who took Maria's character in, fully believing that she was a teenage girl about to be married off to a much, much older man. <laughs> I'll relax you, okay? Yes. However, rather than being a bystander, she took the opportunity to make sure that was what she wanted to do. You got a big brain up there, so use it. Just think, because I don't think you need to change. I will think about it. Hey, that's all I want. That's all I want. I want you to think about it. This moment was a complete surprise, not only to Maria, but for all the people behind the scenes. Not wanting such a scene like this to go to waste, they completely rewrote the Tutar character to make her have a change of heart. They also had Borat come back to her several months later when they needed to come up with a reason for his character to develop. You're giving a little girl to a old man. That should make your chest hurt. Fans of the movie fell in love with Janice, and when news got out that she actually lost her job as a result of the pandemic, a GoFundMe campaign was quickly raised. When Sasha Baron Cohen heard of this, he matched the money raised, and together, $300,000 was raised to make sure she would be okay which of course, she donated almost all of it back into her community. Another person who shocked everyone was Judith Dim Evans. There is a scene where staunch anti-Semite Borat goes into a synagogue dressed as his idea of a Jewish person. It is here he meets Evans for an interview while in costume. 
However, she did not hesitate for a second. Can I give you a hug? Don't, don't. Don't kill me. She then goes into explaining how silly all the things he was saying were. She then opened up about her own real-world experience as a Holocaust survivor. It is a scene that there was no way to predict it would happen, and yet it is hard to imagine a movie working the same without it. One thing that we don't get to see is what happened right after the scene, as this is one of the few times in the filming of his movies that Borat broke character. Not only being raised Jewish himself, Sasha Baron Cohen was also very close to his grandma, who was also a Holocaust survivor. After the interview, he took off the costume to assure that he didn't mean the things he was saying and explained why he was playing the character. It is a rarity for Cohen to break character if he can help it, even during prolonged scenes. There are some things they did to keep the movie lively. The dictionary that Borat carries around during the first movie is actually full of lines and bits that he felt the character would say. It look like uh, Michael Jackson uh, beat it. Man, you better be <laughs> this proves that, even in spontaneous moments, there is still a lot of planning needed in filmmaking. It is moments like this that we will sadly be missing out on, as Sasha Baron Cohen has said that he has permanently retired the character of Borat, as there were many scenes while filming in 2020 that made him genuinely fear for his life. He is proud to have made the second Borat movie and happy that the movie was able to deliver the message he wanted it to. That is the power of working with real people. You never know what to expect from them. There are plenty who will do and say some of the most vile things. If your father was not here. But then you also get those who are good at heart. You shouldn't want to be anybody else but yourself. When you have a cast consisting of real people, you can be left with some of the most interesting and well-rounded characters of all.